going? We are good. Hey. I mean, look at how How's everybody doing? All right, my name is L.A. Roberts. I am the founder of I Inspire Global, where ordinary people with extraordinary stories change the world. I am also the radio personality at WDRB Media, the voice of the community. I flew all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, just to be here with you all on this day. What's the day? What's the day? <laughs> November the 9th. You see, everybody got really foggy. (laughs) So I have the absolute pleasure of hosting this particular panel tonight because it means so much to me. Not only am I a co-author with these beautiful ladies uh, in the book Against All Odds, which you all have gotten your copies, and you are sure to be amazed by everything that's going to be in it. I promise that. You're going to meet your authors today. You're going to hear a little bit more about the chapters, and you're going to be even more excited to get into the book. You all ready? Yeah. Ready. Let me get it one more time. You ready? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and ask the first author to pick it up and let you know exactly who she is. And we're going to ask Miss Reese to do that. Go ahead, oh, Okay. <laughs> I'm going to rewind. Oh. Hello, everyone. Uh, I have a mic, but I don't have to yell. My name is Sharifa. I go by Reed Johnson. I am a internal audit and cybersecurity risk professional turned author turned public speaker. And um, I'm excited to be here today. My chapter is chapter nine, um, The Courage and Power to Persist. Hello, everyone. I'm Christina Saley, now Nation. I have a name change there. Mary, the wonderful John standing back there. <laughs> ah, thank you. Um, I am a parent coach, a best selling author, and international speaker. And my chapter is chapter three the power of connection. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today for this book signing. So if you want to manifest the life of your dreams and you want to change your life today, then you want to read my chapter, chapter six, called The Manifested Mindset. And I'm Dr. Carol DeWall. I'm a certified neonatologist. And I have a company um, founded at Newborn House called MD. And we teach parents everything about babies. So listen, one of the things I did not tell you is what my chapter is, and you all want to know that, don't you? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My chapter is chapter 20, and I'm going to start out by saying a little bit about my chapter. I don't want to give you too much, okay? My chapter is chapter 20. is talking about loss. It's talking about grief. It's talking about losing someone that was so, so close to me, my grandfather. I can tell you that. His name is Leon F. Howard Sr. Absolutely amazing man. When I lost him, it broke everything in me. So if you've ever had the opportunity or if you've ever had the experience of losing somebody or losing something, because people think that it has to be death. It doesn't necessarily have to be death. It can be loss of a job, loss of a child, loss of a parent. It can be loss of yourself because a lot of us don't know who we are. And so that's what we want to help you with today. So the first thing I want to do is actually dive a little bit more into the chapters so that you all can get a little bit, you know, just a little, a little bit, a little tick into what we got going on here. So let's start with Christina. So this is your, your spot, your hometown. I want you to tell me exactly what motivated you to write about what you wrote about in the book. Tell me your motivation behind it. Yes. So my motivation behind my chapter is that I wanted to reach families who had teens or struggling with a talk plan and let them know that, that I see them, I hear them, and I know how hard it is, but that there is hope. That I, too, had my daughter who struggled with depression, and we got through it together, and she's doing amazing. So there is hope, and there is support, and you are not alone. So listen, one of the things I want you to realize that she said is that she's gone through it. And so one of the things that is powerful in this book is that every single author has gone through it. You don't want somebody to tell you how to go through something that they've never gone through, right? Anybody? Anybody? (laughs) 
So what you have is a unique opportunity to meet people that when you actually get in the book and you read it and you want a little bit more, at the end of each chapter is our contact information. So you'll always be able to reach out to us and find out just a little bit more information about what's going on so you can get the help that you need in whatever situation. This book is really prescription. You all agree? Anything that you go through in your life, you can find something to help you with in this book. There are plenty of chapters. You have problems in your relationship. Trust me, it's in there. Grief, it's in here. Your kids that make you want to just do something to them, it's in there. Okay, so you want to make sure that you go ahead and read that. So the next person I'm going to go to is go ahead and Dr. Carol, I want you to tell them exactly why you wrote your in your chapter and what motivated you to do so. So I actually wrote my chapter about 10 years ago. Um, and I was just praying for a perfect place to present it to the world. My chapter manifested mindset, tells my story through the medical, going about going through the medical system, through medical school, residency, fellowship, and, you know, the trials of being a minority or an actual woman, minority, um, and then things that I had to do in my mindset to overcome the obstacle, uh, to be where I am today. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to roll it on over here. Yeah, so I think what motivated me to do it is similar to Dr. Carroll is something that I've always wanted to do, right? There is a saying that everyone has at least one good story in them, right? And so I think this was a perfect opportunity to do it in a low stakes environment where I didn't feel the pressure of having to write a book completely by myself. I had amazing authors to, you know, stand on the shoulders of and to help promote and support um, me through the process. And so the reason why I wrote, what I wrote about in my chapter is because I kind of, I talk about my journey from early adulthood, dealing with difficult relationships. Um, I start out my chapter actually in a situation where I've been locked in a house by um, an abusive boyfriend. And I think the the more that we talk about the stories that were difficult for us to deal with, to come out of, the more we can encourage other people to come out of those situations, to have the courage, courage and power to persist, right? To get themselves out of certain situations and to still feel like they can achieve, you know, the, their dream. And so that's why I chose to write about different stages in my life, not just one particular thing, but the challenges that I faced at every single stage in my life, including law of both my parents to cancer and how even though they didn't stay with me, they were still healed in different ways emotionally. And so I think those kinds of inspiring stories are things that people need to hear because sometimes we think we're in a deficit when really if we look at it just slightly different, we realize we're actually so And so I want to pull out of this that the perspective that you need to have is a more positive perspective as far as what it is that you're going through. You are not by yourself. And it just takes a little bit of a shift. Do you all agree? Just a little bit of a shift and that you're not by yourself. You're not alone in it. And you have no idea. You had no idea. You haven't read the book yet that these women wrote that stuff. Now, did you? I know. I know. I know. So listen, I'm going to ask Christina this. How was it? And I don't want you to give too much. Just give a little, a little taste. How was it when you realized that your daughter was going through such deep depression? How was it? It was, it was definitely scary. Um, you know, as a teen, I had struggled with depression myself. So I, I understood what she was going through to from an extent. Um, but it was scary because even though I had already parented my two older children through adolescence and um, had been a parent coach and, and teaching parenting workshops all over the area uh, and thought I had parenting down, I realized God gave me something else to learn. And um, I, I, you know, had so much to learn about the journey of supporting my daughter um, through that difficult uh, time in her life. 
But because of it and through it all, um, she now has the strength and resilience and the tools to be successful. And we have a stronger, closer than ever relationship. Thank you for sharing that because I know it was definitely difficult for you. Crying nights and things of that nature. See, nobody in here is alone, right? Who all has children? So, no. Hello. It's oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, I'm going to ask Dr. Carol, you mentioned something a little earlier about being a um a woman a woman of color you know all of those things that could look like it's against you but it really is a a, a staple of strength how was that starting medical school and having to stay focused on not just who you are but what you have to give so for me it was a journey i actually didn't start out knowing that i had anything to give I felt like I didn't belong. I felt imposter syndrome. We you know I passed all the tests. I was compromised. I did all the things, basically. But for some reason, I felt less than for many years. And I would basically try to fly under the radar. Basically, don't notice me. Don't bother me. And then not. We're not just trying to make it through, you know? Without having any incidents, basically. Um, because, you know, for instance, one of my programs, there were 90 residents and I was the only person of color, a black person. Um, and not that that a negative thing. It was just, you know, just a different thing. It was just being different. Sometimes people don't know that being different, you know, it exists, you know, even if it's just, I'm the only one who knows. So what happened was over time, I actually was after I graduated from fellowship, that's how many years. And I'm doing the same job as everyone else. I'm doing, you know, I felt a good job. And my patients were happy. Well, my patients were happy. But I'm like the doctor for me. So my babies are always happy. Um, babies are amazing. But that being said, parents are happy. And so I'm like, why do I feel this way? And then when I talk to my my friends, my coworkers of color, they were having similar situations. And many of them had changed jobs and, you know, been put on blacklist and all the things because of the incident they were going through. And I'm like, no, it's kind of a systematic issue. And I realized it wasn't in me per se. It was my perception of being in the situation. I was perceiving myself as less. They weren't necessarily putting that on me. You know, my job performance wasn't reflective of that. So I had to change my mindset. I had to decide who I was going to be. Who, what type of doctor do I want? What type of person do I want to be? And, you know, in this life, people are always telling us who we are, telling us stories about who we are versus going inside of ourselves and telling ourselves who we are and then manifesting it, visualizing it. That's how I got through, you know, after fellowship, you know, um, my life changed drastically because I wasn't, I was no longer flying under the radar anymore. I was being my most authentic self at that point. And, then I realized I have a lot to give and I can reach back. But I'm sure I know I'm not the only one going through this struggle, um, you know, with this imposter syndrome that we all deal with. You know, this is, this is common to people. Um, and I don't care if you are what you're doing, your janitor to the president of the corporation. I don't, everybody's going to do it in some fashion or form. So I felt like it was a, a great topic to discuss, and I use it to minister to, you know, students, to empower them to speak up and to not be afraid of who they are. That's really good. Who all has dealt with imposter syndrome before? Yeah. Dealing with it and trying to determine whether or not you deserve to be here and 
am I qualified and do I, you know, do I fit in? Um, I think everybody does. I know I have, and I'm sure everybody up here has dealt with the same thing. So you're definitely not alone in that. It is the moment that you realize that you do deserve it and that you're here for a reason and that I'm good at what I do and I'm here to shake up the world and that's it and that's all, right? But you have to remind yourself about that every single day. Pat yourself on the back because there will not be people that pat you, pat you on the back. You have to pat yourself on the back. You got to be your number one fan at all times, all right? So listen, I call her Shubby. <laughs> so this is my childhood name. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, I'm, I'm originally from Chicago. Um, I moved to Georgia. I live in Atlanta. I've been there for close to 20 years. So I say I'm part peach now. And sugar has just been, that's just my thing, right? Like everybody's sugar, but she's my special sugar right here. <laughs> so I want to ask you, what gave you the strength? Mm -hmm. um, what made you brave enough to say, you know what? I deserve more. Mm -hmm. I need more. And it's over. Mm -hmm. Like what made you find you? My triggering point was actually in high school. And it was my grandmother. I remember being in the car with her and I had just applied for my first high school job. And I remember getting in the car and she asked me um, how to go. And I said, well, I probably won't get it. And she said, why not? And I said, because I don't see anybody who looks like me who works there. And she turned to me and she said, I don't care. Then show what you'll be the first. And I think I carried that message in my heart everywhere that I've gone. So what? I'll be the first. So anytime that I feel out of place, that I don't belong, I'm the only or I'm the first. Whenever I start to doubt myself, I just remember her work. So what? Then you'll be the first. And so it makes me remember, I don't have to be like everybody else. I just have to show up. I just have to be me. And I have something different and unique and, you know, beneficial to contribute no matter how much, you know, credibility I've built already in my career. There's a story in the chapter where I talk about walking into a room as a cyber security risk professional and all there are are white men. And there's a little young black girl coming in to tell them what to do. And so, um, you know, being in situations like that, I always have to dig in and remember my grandmother's word. So what? Can you be the first? And that's good. And I want to make it very clear that everyone in here has the opportunity to be the first, right? To be the first to make up your mind to be the first person to walk into that room, to be the first person to shift someone's mindset. Um, today, you have the opportunity to sit in front of amazing authors that have different opportunities and different experiences in life in general. But I don't want you to look at it and go, man, I don't have that. I don't really, you know, I haven't experienced that. But you have. You've been the first to do something, whether or not you know it or not. And if you haven't yet, maybe you can be. You could be the first one to open up something new in your neighborhood. The first one to walk into a room and shift the atmosphere when you speak. The first one to open up doors for the next generation behind you. The first one to speak on the mess that is happening that you don't feel good about, right? Those are the first that makes a difference. Those are the first. So I want you to look at that, listen to that, think about that. What can I do? What do I need to do? And we're all here for a reason whether or not you know it or not. But today, I want you to leave. And when you get back to your house, I want you to say, what is it? And then I want you to be still enough to hear what it is. And then you can be first. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll take it. Listen, does anybody have any questions? Don't be scared. Can you tell us about John? The inception of the book, like the idea, how it came about, how you guys got to get there. Mm. Want to check that? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, well, I think it started with the amazing Lisa Nichols that we all have uh, followed and been mentored by um, for many years. And... Um, she reached out to us with the opportunity to co-author this book with her. And um, I think 
all of us just like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, we just we just knew that this was an amazing opportunity and um you know, collaborating with someone as Lisa Nichols, who, you know, we've looked up to in many ways, is a great speaker, tells her story, is so authentic. And so for us to have the opportunity to tell our stories and and have an impact and help others with what we um have to say as well and what we have learned and grown from to be able to help others. Um so yeah, in, in you know, being as as she is, just all about, you know, against all odds. It's it's a part of who she is and and knew that our stories would be just that. Um so we got to work with her and um an amazing team, the um uh yeah. Yeah. But so that's great. Great. Yeah, Celebrity Branding great. Great. is an amazing, amazing agency that um, put this whole uh, work together. And um, and now we're you know, doing our thing on state to state, traveling <laughs> all <laughs> over, spreading the message. Country to country, yeah. yeah. Really? Paris, yeah. Paris. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I want to add that, you know, it was an amazing opportunity to just be among these amazing people. Everyone is so multidimensional. Um, each had a story, but, you know, for instance, you know, you do cyber security yeah. and you're, you do children's marriage coaching and you have a local book. You're a, Amazing celebrity personality, radio host, you know. So we have many stories, but to just be in the room and to be able to put this piece of art out into the world will hopefully help others on their journey with these people. So it was also that, but like, okay, I just want to be a part of this amazing body of, of it. It felt like more than just a book. It's, it's, the book is like a bite and you know, it get more expensive. I just want to ask, um, one of the things that's our main core that Lisa tells us is that your story is not for you. And so I think that's why a lot of us said, yeah, right, as soon as she asked us, did we want to do this? Because she's been instilling with us that it's time to get back. Once she lived it, it's not for you anymore. It's for the next person is going through it and doesn't know what to do. And you're the navigation. You're the prescription. And to hold it, we'll keep it to yourself with doing that person at this service. And so I think that's another motivation that we, for a lot, a lot of us, including me, that how can you, how can you be selfish when you, someone's telling you, you know, you gotta give the next person a chance. And let's be very clear, none of us knew each other before we did it, right? Mm -hmm. None of us knew each other. So it was a beautiful um, reality when we met for the first time. A lot of us met for the first time at the end of July. And when we got the book and we opened it up and realized that the stories were so beautifully intertwined yeah. and they just flowed and we were shocked. We were like, oh my goodness, like, you know, you think you're going to get, you're in an anthology, everybody's doing their own chapter, but when I tell you timing is everything, you will get your tribe, people will come to you, you do not have to look for them, they will come for you, and so we have not known each other but for since July, and we will travel across the country to come and support we will, you know, get on the phone and give advice. We will do that stuff. And so it's easy when you have the same mindset. It's easy when you have that same goal to help other people. I don't think I've met one author in this book that was too good to do anything. You know, we come in, we help put up banners. We, you know, we're unwrapping balloons. We're, you know, like we're helping people out. We're doing what we have to do. And that is the most important thing. Um, this book was just amazing, and Lisa brought it together. Well, let's get it. Anybody else have any other questions? Great. 
Uh, so your um your chapter and then your other book, Everyday Grace, are about uh, parents and making depression. When you decided to write the book, how was it to convince your um your child who was a participant in it actually happening to be vulnerable about their story? How did you get them to buy into allowing you to write the book about that? She got the bike. Right. <laughs> yes, a great question. And and um, I brought up in my uh, red carpet interview that asked that question uh, or asked about it as well. Is um, my daughter is amazing and has a heart for helping others just as I do. And so she, you know, from the beginning when I started working with families who specifically had teens that were struggling with depression, she gave permission to share her story at that time because she knew it would help others. And then she also agreed when I decided to write the book and, and she read every chapter and every everything before I, you know, went through and published anything. And I will tell you that she has said that since it's become published and getting all this attention, it is very vulnerable for her. Um, now she has people coming up to her say, oh, I didn't realize you had struggled. Um, but she still knows the mission and um, and wants to help others. And she will be here later. She's actually sick. <laughs> so she's, she's not home resting, but she's going to try to show up a little bit later just for a minute um, because this book wouldn't be without her um, and her strength and um, her strength to, to show up and have some beer and, and have her story told. Thank you for asking. Does anybody else have any other question? Okay. You all want to wrap the question up? But we're going to be here. Okay. I want to let you know we have a second session that's going to be starting at five, five o'clock. Okay. 